Hi folks, in this video we discuss contradiction intro and contradiction elim, two new rules for formal proofs. It's easy to understand these rules if you remember a couple of things. One is the contradiction principle from the textbook, which says that only a contradictory set of sentences can entail a contradiction. So let's say that we have two sentences that make an explicit contradictory set, like we have some sentence Q and then the exact sentence negated, not Q. This is a contradictory set, they can't possibly both be true. So anytime we can have that pattern of sentences, we're allowed to introduce the contradiction symbol. This has to be valid, because we know that this contradiction is gonna follow from a contradictory set. Now, when you do that, you say contradiction intro and those two individual sentences. So these have to be on separate lines. You can't just have one line that says Q and not Q altogether. You have to have two separate sentences for this rule. One is some sentence and the, the other one is that exact sentence negated, and remember, Q can be atomic or complex. I'm just using it as any random sentence. How about contradiction elim? Well, whenever you have the contradiction symbol, you're allowed to write any sentence at all that you want, any random sentence like R, because remember that weird case of validity. A contradiction follows from any, a contradiction entails anything. So any, any random sentence R would follow from a contradiction. We can write R, we could write P and Q, we could write not R, we could write R and not R. Any of those are gonna follow validly. And for this rule, you just cite one thing, the line with the contradiction symbol that you've got. Okay, now if you understand those rules, you should be able to solve this proof. So pause your videos now and see if you can work this out. All right, that was your chance to pause your videos. We're gonna talk about the answer. Now, the first thing I notice here is the sentence R in my conclusion doesn't even appear up here in the premises. So I'm gonna probably have to use the contradiction elim in order to get this thing. But the other thing I notice, even if that didn't occur to you, my premise is a wide scope conjunction, and you know what to do with conjunctions. Let's just start bringing down the conjuncts. So this is how I would start out my proof. Now, if you're looking at the wide scope connective that you've got here, you might notice that you have two, contradic two negation symbols, so we could just eliminate those with negation elim to get P. This is an atomic sentence, this is a literal, so I can't apply any rules to it, but I can go back to my original premise and bring down the other conjunct. So that's what I did next, conjunction elim on one again. Now I notice I've got a wide scope conjunction, so I'll just bring down one of those conjuncts. I'm just applying this principle of paying attention to the main connectives, and that's helping me make progress. At a certain point, you're gonna end up just with literals, and so you have to notice a pattern at this point that I have some sentence P, and I have the negation of P here, and that means I've got grounds for introducing my contradiction symbol. I'm just gonna cite those two things. Now once I have pound, that's like, that's like the license to write whatever I want. I can do contradiction elim and just write my conclusion that I want. So I get R and now I'm done. So I did this in seven lines, applying those principles of paying attention to the main connective. You might've noticed there was a shortcut. So there was actually a better way to do that proof. Let me point something out that is easy to miss. When I got these two negation symbols here, I actually didn't need to eliminate them. I could have left that alone and brought down the second conjunct and then brought down not P. Because look at this, here I have some sentence, not P, and I have that exact same sentence, not P, with a negation sign in front of it. So I could cite two and four in order to justify the contradiction symbol. There's no need to do that negation elim. So when I have that rule, when I have the rule of contradiction intro, Q could be atomic or it could be complex. Q could be the sentence not P, where this is not P and then this is not not P. That's also a valid in, uh, application of the rule. All I need for this rule to work is some sentence and then that exact same sentence written down here with a negation sign in front of it. Okay, so those are the two new rules that you need to master, the contradiction intro and contradiction elim, thanks.